It is July 20th, 1969. You and 600 million other people are watching Neil Armstrong take that giant leap for mankind. What you're seeing live on TV is the most viewed broadcast in history, one that won't be surpassed until Prince Charles marries Diana Spencer over a decade later. The competition to send humans to the moon has finally come to an end, and you and the rest of the world can see without a doubt that America won the space race. And this was a huge win. Students all across the country became excited about math and science, making STEM education a national priority. GPS, LASIK, and even invisible braces are some of the many spinoffs from the space race that make our lives, or at least our smiles, better. And then there's the pictures. The pictures from our voyages to the moon have inspired big dreams in people for generations to come. I'm one of those people. All of my life, I've wanted to work in space. And at 30, almost 30 years old, I still want to be an astronaut. So that way I can do cool things like this. I feel a little uncomfortable admitting this to you today. And it's probably not the smartest thing to say a month before starting an internship with NASA. But I think our space program has failed because we built it out of fear when we should have built it from something more. It all started when the Soviet Union spent, sent a piece of metal the size of a beach ball into orbit. Sputnik was the world's first satellite, and anyone with a radio receiver could listen to it beep as it circled the globe once every 90 minutes. Back home in the United States, we were terrified. Terrified of losing our reputation for having the best technology in the world. In response, we created NASA and dedicated a ton of resources towards it. At one point, we spent almost 5% of the federal budget in a rush to show that we would not be outdone by the Soviet Union. We became a space nation, or we thought we did. After the first moon landing, we stopped being afraid of losing in, of losing in space and we stopped investing and exploring it. Reaching the first milestone was such a huge relief that we didn't think about going any further. Sure, we built the International Space Station, and that's been flying high for almost 20 years. But since the last moon landing in the 70s, the only things to leave low Earth orbit have been robots and a Tesla. Without fear, the United States lost the enthusiasm that sent us where no humans had gone before. Without fear, America stopped spacing. When I was in high school, I ran cross country, and I'll never forget my first race. That's me, and I'm looking down because my shorts are on backwards. Now, before I finish this story, I have to tell you that a high school cross-country race is about three miles. In the beginning, I was really eager to prove that I could beat everyone to the finish line. But in reality, I was just scared of losing. The starter fired his gun, and I sprinted at full speed. I knew that I was going to win the race after finishing the first mile in five and a half minutes. And some of you are like, yeah, yeah, that is pretty impressive. <laughs> because I was scared of losing a competition, I didn't plan for how far I actually needed to go. My poor planning caused me to become tired, and I fell further and further behind everyone else. The fear that put me ahead initially wasn't enough to sustain me. Fear is a powerful motivator, its effects are almost immediate. After all, fear got me and NASA to the first milestone in record time. But for the long term, we can't rely on fear to sustain our ambitions. 
the United States built an entire space program out of panic, and because of that, we have failed to leave the planet for almost 50 years. Without fear, what will push us to go back to the moon or to Mars or to anywhere else in the solar system? Without fear, how can we make America space again? Hmm, how can we do that? Hmm. Perspective. We have to change our country's perspective on the importance of scientific discovery and space exploration. It all starts with how we invest in the next generation of science lovers and space enthusiasts. Organizations like the Mars Generation are working to address that challenge today. I have the pleasure of helping coordinate their Student Space Ambassador program. Now, this program doesn't just get people together and say, hey, yay, space is cool, we're going to Mars, it's going to be awesome, woo. <laughs> no. <laughs> this program teaches teens and young adults to become leaders and advocates for space exploration within their community. We also do really cool things like offer full scholarships to space camp for students with financial need. Now, the work of the Mars Generation and organizations like that is important to the future of human space exploration. It helps us create and maintain a lifelong interest in the thought of one day sending humanity back out to other worlds. But we can't let these organizations do all of the work. We, as a larger community, can spark the next age of innovation by teaching our youth to think creatively and deeply. When we interact with kids and teenagers, we need to be asking them why. Why do you have this dream? Why is this subject important to you? Why are you using that method to solve the problem that you are facing? Critical thinking helps develop our ability to accept other perspectives. It also helps us devise imaginative solutions to complex problems, like those in space exploration. I believe that the United States is capable of reviving the energy and the enthusiasm that literally lifted our space program off the ground. That enthusiasm was rooted in fear, but now we can do better. If we invest in inspiring the next generation and we commit to teaching them how to think critically, then we can incite a positive future for human space exploration. And one day, we will make America space again. Thank you.